Hello, everyone. This is Professor Hamamoto. It is June 25th, year 2023, 4 p.m. PDT. And I welcome Nikosmos and Corky Goss to the live chat. And hopefully there'll be more arrivals soon. I made a, a late announcement as usual. Part of it is strategic. Part of it is just the um, lack of being able to get it together in time. But uh, for the past several weeks now, I've been um, doing at least one live cast per week on Sundays, typically around four o'clock, just as a program note for those of you who are new. But I also followed up with a um, confirmation notice that I'm going to be on. So the regulars know that they can expect me, God willing, uh, to present weekly on a weekly basis, uh, something provocative, something highly original and something that will engage your imagination and motivate you to <laughs> into uh, action, political, social, cultural, spiritual action, instead of uh, inertia, right? And most of my viewers uh, are of that former ilk, not the latter, right? Um, yeah, I had a really uh, interesting conversation with a friend and colleague of mine today by phone. Um, you might know her from previous uh, talks that she's been on here. We've had some conversations, live streams together. She hasn't been on in a while, but um, uh, we we managed to have a nice conversation this uh, Sunday morning. And her name is uh, Kirby Summers, and uh, she's working away uh, doing her usual uh, intrepid reportage. And um, I just... Uh, extended my thanks to her for <laughs> making me understand the importance of the American Midwest as uh, a very important region, not just in the U.S., but globally, so far as the New World Order is concerned, and without going to, into the specifics. Because, like a lot of people, I usually think New York City, of course, that's obvious, right? Chicago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Al, Al Capone and... More recently, Barack Hussein Obama and uh, all that whole network that brought him to power. And and for just for fun, you know, they throw in um, Hollywood, Los Angeles. But uh, as we talked about, it's not really Hollywood. It's the power center of law. It's, it's Pasadena or maybe Hancock Park. Hollywood is the glitzy. And I mention this because it's kind of a distraction. The real power center that, that you don't hear about, and, and it's being led by this family that she's been reporting on, really great, especially the more recent scion of the um, Chandler family, going back to the general Otis Chandler, and then, you know, grandfathers, fathers, and whatnot is um, a more recent um, uh, Chandler who's um, operating at very high levels. So um, she suggested I might do a talk on the Chandler family. And um, I have some material on it, including very good biographies. I think I will, uh, because they're not really viewed as being one of these mover and shaker American families, because it's L.A. You know, the, the rap on L.A. is that it's all Hollywood. It's glissy. There's no serious people living there. It has really low intellectual content it's all glitz and glamour that's what san Francisco, you know bay area people like to think about uh los angeles far from the truth just like uh uh so-called silicon valley or pentagon valley or darpa valley gets all the attention right now i've been trying to say no 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 yeah yeah sure right but really it was preceded and still really not in the shadows though but 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 in the forefront of uh, New World Order technologies, that's Orange County, California. That's where I spent a lot of uh, years of my youth there in the shadows of Disneyland. Okay, so we're, she, she and I, you know, independently of each other. Um, and we, you know, we share some observations and points of commonality um, are bringing to the fore new areas of research and um and understanding in the Midwest is big. Columbus, Ohio. We know about, you know, Chi-Town, Chicago, Illinois, right? But what about Detroit? It makes sense. And then we'll have to credit uh, 
Uh, my friend and colleague, uh, David Cranmer Underdown, who under the tutelage of my friend and colleague, John O'Loughlin, uh, who's been mentoring him for the past couple of years, um, he's from the Midwest and he lives in the shadow of the suburb, suburbs of um, Detroit. And um, he went to the same, I had him on my show, yeah, uh, it, to find out, pick his brains about his prep school where Robin Williams attended, you know, not at the same time. Uh, Robin Williams is substantially older than David Cranmer Underdown, but he was part of that uh, automobile Detroit um, uh, executive class people. And then they moved a family to Marin County, and that's where Robin Williams finished out his, I think, high school and junior high. And I think he went to community college there. And of course, uh, and I'm mentioning this is because um, he was able to get into San Francisco fairly easily. It's right across the Golden Gate Bridge and uh, study. He was also a, a theater major, right? It, his classmate, was it was it uh, Christopher Reed? Uh, Reeves, rather, Superman? I think they were roommates or, you know, they were in that cohort. So he's a trained actor. I'm talking about Robin Williams. So we shared um, yeah, information about that uh, that kind of runs parallel to our own work. So uh, hopefully we, you know, I'll, we'll, uh, share some more notes on uh, our mutual areas of interest, right? So today, though, we're going to um, talk about this documentary, and I want to thank at the outset my my wonderful patronistas, the people who support me on Patreon every month, and I was able to buy this um, DVD that dropped fairly recently. And yes, I confess I bought it from the retailer that ate the world, uh because i wanted it quick because i wanted to, to be able to to review this with you today and i have some really good clips for you so hang on right some really good clips f extracted from this uh, but i wanted to get the dvd early and i sure enough it came on wednesday and i've been studying it and um, have some and i learned a lot i learned a lot and i will tell you at the outset that this is a uh, classic this is a classic document of any uh, genre you want to talk about. As far as documentaries go, and typically, from what I've been able to observe, uh, observe the documentaries that are high quality and the ones that get uh, nominated for awards, the Golden Globe or Academy Award, tend to be on the left to progressive exposés, right? Deservedly so. And like I've been saying uh, repeatedly, there's a lot that uh, the left and conservative and the, the, the different factions, supposedly, which is an artificial uh, set of divisions created by, you know, the same forces that uh, are responsible for most of the other ills of the world. There's a lot that we, we have in common here. So I'm saying that if you are on that left liberal end of it, you don't have to be a church going Christian or even a Christian to benefit from this. The the material here, and I'm not apologizing for the Christian content of it. I'm just saying that this is a classic because it appeals to larger questions about governance, not just in the United States of America, but on a global level, right? Whether you're on the left or the right or the middle, or you're just now awakening, you probably are you're familiar with the concept of the new world order, right? It's been gaining greater salience and common everyday discourse and discussion, just everyday chat. Even the legacy media will, and they're less sneeringly uh, condescending about it. You notice these days, in fact, they're saying, okay, let's go with it. We're going to roll out, and this is going to be uh, one of the main themes of today's talk, today's review, it's more of a film review, um, is that they're going with, I'm talking about legacy media and even the, the U.S. Congress and uh, our so-called elective officials. Um, and they're saying, okay, yeah, we're going to get, we're going to do the uh, UFO deal. You know, we, we're going to finally, <laughs> you know, we've been holding on to that uh, Trump card, no no uh, pun intended, or maybe so. We're going to hold on to that joker until we've exhausted everything. We're going to say, okay, you're right. E.T. has called home. Uh, however, as you're going to see from the uh, critique or the review of this great documentary, Lies of Men and Gods, I should tell you the title verbally, in case you can't read it here. 
uh, um, it's mostly by Steve Quayle, I'd say, and I'll, I'll give you some of the highlights of his career in a moment. But also, I think it was written primarily by a name Daniel Holdings. I don't know him, uh, his his work, um, but it it bears the imprint mostly of uh, Mr. Stephen Quayle, who I've been listening to uh, forever, watching and reading as well. So I might as well tell you right now what, in, in case you don't know, and I think most of you are acquainted with some of his work. So I apologize to you if you are, if this is old news to you, but he's done a series of really, really nicely done and um, provocative and thought, thought provoking uh, books on uh, giants, angels, and demons. I guess I can't give you the exact titles. If you want to check it out, go to his website, which I did earlier. It's really nice. It's really, very, very, very well done. It's uh, one of the, the most uh, handsome um, websites designs that I've seen. It's also uncluttered. It's very easy to, because he's a he's a multifaceted thinker and writer and media person, director, of course. Um, yeah, his his scope is is truly impressive, and um, he's got a unique perspective drawn from earlier uh, contributions that. Um, are timely, right? They're they're really made for for any number of of artificially divided factions in American society. This documentary might uh, bring pe large uh, numbers of people together, and because uh, everybody likes to speculate, almost everybody about outer space and alien encounters, right? Um, Especially now, since uh, it has semi-official government approval and sanction, and you're no longer viewed as a nutcase if you talk about it, right? But they have them again, and I'll get to it in a moment. Also, I should mention in passing that in addition to his great books that he's done, um, I was very much uh, taken with his running list of dead scientists and of course, it would attract someone like me because most scientists operate in an academic institutional setting, right? And, and sure enough, most of the people who are listed there, and, and the list stops at 2011. Uh, it hasn't, you know, there's Dr. Buttar recently left us and under suspicious circumstances. And, but we see in his list, Steve Quayle's list early on that, uh, more than a few missing scientists were, were health scientists, especially those who were promoting a, um, a let's say, independent inquiry where it comes to um, health and um, medicine, especially if they were on holistic medicine or, or in other words, anti, not anti, but people who were... I want to be able to say this without being booted off to you, but we're, had a jaundiced approach to what we now commonly call big pharma. All right. Those types of people. Uh, but there are any number of others uh, within the academic science setting. And of course, that interests me because I was at the University of California for 21 years, not in the sciences, but in the handmaiden fields, you know, sociology you know, social science area, uh, those are, you know, the, uh, the cultural studies type, type or humanities, the, the soft side, which, by the way, has been enlisted uh, recently under the guise of GLBTQ and CRT has been enlisted to advance the science agenda to take the attention away from them. That's one of the reasons why this documentary is so important because they don't talk about GLBTQ or isn't that a refreshing change uh, because it is a distraction. So let's get off of the uh, people with the purple hair and the, the, the piercings and the fact that it's pride month. Okay. All right. And the, and the butt boycott. Great. I'm glad that uh, people are, are exercising the economic clout and they're voting with their dollars and you know that's that's fine uh, but at the same time let's probe it the deeper uh foundations civilizational foundations of what is really behind this alien um pop-up phenomenon that we're seeing right now and i think uh, the people who are who contribute because sequel is the director and the main writer 
but you'll see some familiar faces and I've done some excerpts here. Um, and including our own uh, Leo Zagami is in there. I was kind of surprised because uh, on the cover here, that doesn't say what's a special appearance by so-and-so and so-and-so. It's usually the, the who's who of, of the of very familiar faces. Um, but he lets us, uh, the director's DQL, uh, lets us find out for ourselves. And again, I will remind you, some of you already know this, but uh, I had an incredible conversation with the one and only Leo Zagami on this channel here. And you can find it in the suppressed playlist of Professor Hamamoto. And while you're at it, while you're thinking about it, press subscribe and you want to share this video, you want to subscribe, and you'll also want to join my Patreon group. It's the Patreonistas that allow me to buy these and buy this, right? Um, I didn't ask Leo for a free copy or, or an examination copy. I bought it, you know, and I'm perfectly willing to support uh, people, especially uh, incredible books like this, and get your own copy as well. Get your own I'm going to tell you up front, get your own copy of this as well, because my intention in showing these excerpts is not to spoil this documentary experience. You have to watch it from the beginning to end to get the full impact. I can only give you a certain select highlights or areas that, that I think uh, are really useful and talking about now, right, in the middle or the end of Pride Month when, while we're being distracted with a submersive, submersible, submersible uh, craft, like, you know, that's, there's some talk about that. I'm not even going to go in that direction at this point. And that's going to, uh, maybe that was the reason why it was sunk. Um, maybe they want us to get talking about that for the next two months. You know, it's going to be on the Alex Jones show for the next two months, along with the little adverts with the people who are screaming with the, um, with the rainbow colored hair, right? Which, as I told you before, is not representative of young people and certainly not representative of people, students that I knew at the university. And again, this, this harkens back to my theme that I've been hammering away, is that the ind indie media is, is the big problem now. It's not CNN anymore, it's not Fox. It's indie media, not just the pop-up pundits, but the ones, the OGs, the ones that have been around since the days of public access or in the early days of podcasts. You know, the heyday. I just loved when podcasts, I discovered this, this new medium. And a lot of these guys now are, are being cast aside and your Ben Shapiro's and your Stu Peters and even some younger ones are being brought in to occupy that space, which is just meet the new boss, same as the old boss. They're corporatists that are running tube you now. Right. Um, so, but you're beginning to figure that out, but some people still don't get it yet. They think that um, wonderful Polly is, is uh, an, organic, an organic creation. She's spontaneous. And I know it's not wonderful Polly. Someone chided me, they reprimanded me for saying, it's not wonderful Polly. It's fantastic Polly. And I said, yeah, yeah, I know. I, I just do that to get a rise out of you. And uh, there's really graceful now with, you know, all, all these are examples that I'm giving you. And I, and I want I'm, and I'm focusing on this recurrently because the sooner uh, the, the newbies move, move on from those, but the better off we're all going to be. And the newbies who are just now dipping their toe into this area of inquiry, it's, which is very deep and it's, it's longstanding. It's as old as the American Republic, going back to colonial times and even to the countries uh, whence the uh, populations, you know, uh, came came to the U.S. But just for now, you'll see that there's a there is a a huge history here, and one of the pioneers of the more recent history of alternative media is again Steve Quayle, and this is. Uh, this review is also meant as an homage to him, right, yeah, to coincide with his latest contribution, which is the best that I've seen so far. For one, for one, and you could be a person who is a professional movie producer or website designer. You will be, you will be impressed by the high quality graphics 
right? As they, you know, quote unquote, production values, the sound, the sound you know, everything. It's really good, except for one very, very short, cheesy uh, interlude down in Mexico. Um, if I was doing the editing, I would not have put that in there. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. And I'll, let me get the negativity out, out of the way early. Uh, here's Angel. That. Fallen Angel. Wow. This is amazing. This is definitely amazing, bro. And here we got a, a specter like Fallen Angel. Let's find, let's find the other piece before I start. There has to be the top part to this. Here it is. Bam, baby. We're in like Flynn. Fallen Angel. Wow. Okay, Fallen that, Angel. That's the, that's wow. The, uh, Fallen that, Angel. I'm sorry. I'm trying to shut it. That's the only clinker. So we'll get that away and forget the rest of it's uh just bang on right spot on yeah 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 i mean it 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 looks like for one thing it looks like it's staged and this this guy's not an archaeologist he's a home homeboy from east l.a man yeah yeah i mean like fleeing uh but you know it's done in mexico so supposedly you know maybe he's in his element even though his ancestors probably left mexico you know generations ago uh, but anyway it's just, just kind of you know, that's uh, so, you know, just just disregard that. Yeah, he, they just happened to be there filming when they found this artifact. Like, like, how would he know what these symbols are on these artifacts? And it's just so, and the top part of it just so happened to be right there. Yeah. Anyway, but the rest of the stuff is very well researched. And they do visit some um, some sites through uh, people like Tom Horn. Who hopefully you know about and i mentioned these names because i want you to read their work and look at their videos if you haven't already right write that take notes and uh and uh, look at their work and i'm saying i agree with with all of what they say but these are the ogs that have brought us to 2023 despite any manner of of um pestilences let's call them that have been visited upon us these people have, with their their scholarship, their work, their research, their videos, their their um, their books, of course, have nourished this movement that that all Americans now are beginning to benefit by. Yes, we're beginning to to to, to sow the uh, the crops, the you know the seeds that were sown by these gentlemen. So again, this review here is also serving double duty as an homage to people like Tom Horn, um, Chris Putnam, spelled C-R-I-S, who co, I'm just giving you the backstory here because th this documentary didn't come out of nowhere. It's a, it's a years long, decades long process that's built on the contributions of, of these uh, investigators. Um, yeah, he co-authored a couple of books and I checked to see if it's still in print on the retail of the day at the world. It's called Exo Vaticano. And I looked there and I said, and I looked and I said, I didn't realize it. I said, it tells you when you bought the book, just in case you don't order it again, because you forgot. I said, I bought the book back in 2013, June 3rd. That was over 10 years ago now that I was introduced to Exo Vaticano. And that was co authored by Chris Putnam, who, by the way, died at a very young age. Um, I think he was 51, 53, or early 50s. Uh, but did some of his best work in tandem with Tom Horn, who we're going to see in a moment, who have, and I'll let him do the speaking himself, has a very specific and important biblically grounded understanding of what the alien psyop is about. They don't call it a psyop, by the way. And all the all the expectations that you have from watching the the sexy UFO YouTubes and all the supposed experts that are trying, many of whom I respect, by the way, to the point where I've gone to talks to see them live and talk and 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 see their presentations, as well as reading their books. And I've given some of these um, talks, right? People like uh, Richard Dolan, uh, Joseph P. Farrell, you know, tons of people. So I'm not dis dismissive of the work. On, on the contrary, okay. Now, uh, while I'm on that that line, one of the people that 
that I did have sort of a rude awakening about it, thanks to this documentary. And I like that. I, I like to be challenged. I like to learn something new. I don't like the same old, same. I don't like the repeaters. I don't like the pop-up pundas. I want to learn something. I don't be, and I want to be shocked into a new level of understanding. And I'm not saying I'm going to buy the argument just on the face of it, but at least it's telling me that, hey, maybe you uh, were misled or you're misunderstanding or you're, you're not fully grasping the purport of a certain thinker. And this certain thinker that I'm alluding to and building up the suspense over is that of Zachariah Sitchin. And as anybody who is just remotely conversant in this area of study, just for fun, even, you would know the name of Zachariah Sitchin. But certainly, if you're an expert, you're going to, you'll have a certain, a very specific uh, understanding or appreciation, or maybe even <laughs> hatred of one Zachariah. And, I, and by the way, I read some of the, com, you know, before comments and commentary and objections. Uh, I, I try to remain open on it, but uh, I, I'll tell you the truth. I haven't, I've only read two or three of his books, right? I haven't read the whole series of them. And um, uh, in fact, the first time I read it was only, God, five years ago. It was fairly, fairly recent. I, I took the book with me to Vietnam, of all places. Um, and, um, but, you know, I just read it, you know, for face value, not on a critical level. But he, Sitchin's work, looms very large in this documentary, which you'll see pretty soon because I'm not explaining it. I can't explain it very well. Uh, and that was kind of a shocker to me. Um, the one question I had is that Steve Quayle uh, lumps in Zachariah Sitchin's insights with that of people who, the, you know, physicists, theoretical physicists and scientists, right, um, such as Chandra Wickrama Singh, who had given a talk on, who are advancing this notion of panspermia, pan, you know, P-A-N, spermia, the notion that the Earth planet Earth and other planets, but we're talking about Earth here, was seeded, quote unquote, seeded by uh, bacteria or viruses that that came to into the Earth's orbit and landed on Earth through meteorites or um, some sort of um, space satellite, not artificial, but just, you know, space debris carrying that. And uh, that theory is, is still being um, I uh, examined thoroughly here, and it's a very convincing argument to me, if I may say so. And I've read a lot of Chandra Wickrama Singh, who writes for a, an educated public, not just for his fellow theoretical physicists. And there's some very, very um, high caliber scientists that subscribe to it. So I don't think it was quite uh, fair to to lump Sitchin in with the these panspermia people, because that print the panspermia theorists, that's not antithetical to the notion of a god that is the source of life, right, in the universe as well, well as on the earth. I think what uh, Quayle, if I may say so, was objecting to is that Sitchin never, his, his work is not biblically influenced, in fact, just quite the contrary, probably trying to, in his own way, trying to lead us away from theological, biblical, or spiritual, Christian, Judaic, or Islamic interpretations of the creation of Earth and the meaning of human life. Okay, that's I'm, that's just what I'm interjecting. That's part of my review here. Um, so that's just you know another quibble here. But before I bore you to death, let's take a look at. Um, I did a short little clip here, and again, I don't want to deter you from perching this yourself. You want this as a legacy. Uh, by showing you this, right? So I apologize to the filmmakers. My intention is not to do that. My intention is to stimulate sales uh, for you because I, I think this is a great film, uh, truly. I was um, I was not surprised, I'd say, but I was gratified that, that uh, there's people out there who are doing top quality, five-star work, right, in terms of production values and... and um, and the look of it, because because they're competing against right the people down you know our favorite whipping boy Hollywood right, and uh, they're doing a good job at it. And that's the good news about technology is that a lot of music, a lot of films, even shows like this, my little humble tube you show, 
is being done in the box right now through a computer, a desktop computer, right? So anyway, um, yeah, I, I would ask them what, what film, what uh, editing program they're using for their film because it's like top quality. Anyway, let's take a look at the, um, the overview of the film. When it comes to the UFO phenomenon, there is a completely different agenda being promoted to the public by government than that which has actually been employed. The real agenda has been built on years of silence, half-truths, and lies. While the world is enticed with what many people believe to be imminent disclosure, vassal states, to include the Vatican, have already ceded their power and freedom to these approaching alien gods and are preparing for their return. However, far from bearing good gifts for mankind, their arrival will bring destruction to a world that is already teetering on the brink. Based upon their established history and documents recovered through the Freedom of Information Act, we know that the CIA and the military industrial complex as a whole has purposely misled the public when it comes to UFOs. They have a track record of half-truths, outright lies and cover-ups. And we've seen it time and time again through the decades over and over and over. In his usual, unconventional and candid way, the late George Carlin once echoed the thoughts of the average person where UFOs are concerned. To my way of thinking, there is every bit as much evidence for the existence of UFOs as there is for the existence of God. He also said, at least in the case of UFOs, there have been countless taped and filmed and, by the way, unexplained sightings from all over the world, along with documented radar evidence seen by experienced military and civilian radar operators. To Carlin's point, there are almost as many people who believe in UFOs compared to those who believe in God. 81% versus 65%. We will now turn to the business of this hearing. More than 50 years ago, the U.S. government ended Project Blue Book, an effort to catalog and understand sightings of objects in the air that could not otherwise be explained. At the recent congressional hearings on UFOs, there appeared to be a disconnect between the reality of what is truly going on in our skies versus 80 years of government cover-ups and outright lying to the public. Many people interviewed said that the televised hearing felt forced. Reports of sightings are frequent and continuing. And it appeared that Congress only held the proceedings to appease the populace. If Carlin was still alive, he would have agreed. As he said, real evidence of UFOs have been obvious for years. Congressman Tim Burchett from Tennessee appeared on News Nation in defense of those same views. Does the Pentagon know more than they're saying? 100%. We need to start addressing it because if these, whatever they are, have control of the air like that, it's a national defense issue for us. I think there's an arrogance in government at that level. It's a bogus cover up. It doesn't fit. And, it, and it's about power and it's about control. Uh, and, they, and, you know, we're asking the Pentagon to investigate something that they covered up. This is the denial letter for information that the congressman was referring to in response to the Freedom of Information Act request. In it, the military and our own government appears to be slamming the lid on any further release of information regarding UFOs. In writing, the deputy director from the Freedom of Information Act office, Gary Kaysen, said, the UAP task force has responded back to the DNS 36 request and stated that the requested videos contain sensitive information pertaining to unidentified aerial phenomena and are classified and are exempt from disclosure in their entirety under exemption and in accordance with executive order. The release of this information will harm national security as it may provide adversaries valuable information regarding Department of Defense and Navy operations, vulnerabilities, and or capabilities. No portions of the video can be segregated for release. And how exactly could this information harm national security? I think we're probably reverse engineering some of it. 
uh, because the uh, the, uh, the enormous amounts of it that are in military installations or in, in reserved area. I mean, it's so compartmentalized. Um, a lot of the people that are probably working on it don't even know they're working on it. According to at least one of our political leaders, our military may have reversed engineered aircraft whose origins are, according to Congressman Tim Burchett, out of this world. Will the military and the government eventually come clean on the whole UFO phenomenon? Probably not. And if we are to ever hear the truth about this issue, it may likely fall to the aliens to disclose themselves. And so, we wait. October of 2017, in Seattle, Washington, a man named Lou Elizondo walked out onto a stage. Okay, most of you know the whole argument, and I was glad to hear from the editorial content here, the drift of it, or the purport, more, more accurately, is that they're not going to wait, they're not going to depend on the government, right? It's, it's so ironic that you have people who say, yeah, less government, um, and uh, just set us free but but at the drop of a hat they'll say oh we need a congressional investigation and a regulatory command and they appeal to the government to legitimize just a lot of common sense and independent observation and even research by uh, entities that are non-governmental there's enough material out there right it's the same very similar situation to the people think saying oh yeah we need more research on vaccines before we can go ahead right the research is in same way, same way with ionizing radiation, you know, uh, that, that information has, has been out there. So the, the more research, the more study, the more independent, the more fact finding commissions, the more special counsels like John Durham. What did that result in any action, any, any, uh, indictments? No, he said, Oh, it's the FBI. It's the CIA. Yeah, we knew that. Tell us something new, Mr. John Durham, right? So I think that is a really important palate cleanser right there. We need to hear that. We don't need the U.S. Congress to tell us what's going out there up there, but we do need people like um, Tom Horn and Chris Putnam and others, you know, within that sort. And of course, uh, Steve Quayle to to assess what the implications of these sightings are. That's what I want to know. Right. And so, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm fascinated by Die Glocke and all the sexy Nazi technology. And I want to know more about Maria Orsich and the Vril Society, just like you. And I'm fascinated by Vivel's uh, Berg Castle and uh, Heinrich Himmler. And the, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm with you there. I want it. But I, I'm interested in survival for 2023, like right now and beyond. What is the agenda? And I and this brings me to what I think is the signal strength of lies of men and gods. And that's why I alluded to the lies and of men, but not gods, in the title of this talk. I said with spo special focus on the earthly powers. Okay, not the ETs, not the Anunnaki, right? Or the Watchers, the Fallen Angels. We've all we've all read that literature. Some of us believe it literally out of the Bible. Some of it are, are entertained by it. But I'm talking about the earthly powers, and I said earthly powers. I use that phrase because I didn't want to be um, uh, sabotaged by tube you up. This might be taken off. Uh, so for all you people on the live stream. You know, enjoy yourselves. I might have to do an entire new show just for Patreons, right? Uh, which I will do if 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 necessary. But uh, I say this because I'm I I purposely avoided using the V word, right? That stands for Vatican, right? That's almost like using the C word or the other V word that we've experienced over the past almost three years now. You know what that is, right? RFK Jr. talks about it a lot, but I'm talking about the other V word, <laughs> which is also Ben Bolton, and that is uh, Vaticano. And as I mentioned before, Tom Horn, Chris Putnam, his writing partner, his co-author, have been 
have, have been there and then done that. And, and by the way, they, they did a couple more books after that, but that was the first one in a series, uh, which got them not just a lot of popular acclaim. They certainly um, grabbed my attention, but they were being invited all uh, to, to all these different high level institutions to share their insights with people. Said, How did you figure this stuff out? How did you predict that Pope so-and-so is going to, going to resign and there's going to be two popes instead of one, you know, just issues like that. So, um, uh, and, and papal politics, Vatican politics has been, uh, something that we've been more and more acquainted with thanks to the, the great e efforts and sacrifice, perhaps even of his own life. Uh, father, while well, he wasn't a father when he died, he, uh, was, um, declaricized if that's the proper term he, he left he didn't leave the church but he ceased being a um a clergyman and he uh according to his own accounts has left the uh, had left the society of jesus before he died in an accident after attending a a uh, ritual uh, exorcism that he was invited to right but that's malachi martin right so this film bring and he's he has a well, he's gone. He's with Jesus now. So, but there was a, a brief mention, I think, a sort of an homage to his contribution in this film here. And he's an important person. That's why this film is just not about Steve Quayle. It's about a whole movement that has come into its maturity that I believe that the larger American public, Christian or not, Jewish, Muslim, you could be a stone cold atheist. Uh, are are going to take a look at this film and uh, assess it rationally, and they're going to take it quite seriously. And I'm sure that's that also extends to people <laughs> uh, who are in the higher reaches of government and these different uh, institutions. Now, you can bet NASA is going to watch this in certain congressional committees, and um, and 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 that's a good. That's really a good. Um, uh, process because they're 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 they'll be able to take a better reading of what the american public is really about and we're not just about a, a bunch of suckers who are going to just to to um to take hook line and sinker all the new psyops that you got you got ready for us right they've got some stuff in their pocket and they're telling you know blue beam and all that stuff and what's going on now it's kind of a test right and they had this one limited hangout who was making the rounds for for a short time until he's ah that's well because because the the point of understanding i mean it's like we we get it really really quickly now so this film is going to going to educate the enemy about where we're at we're giving counter counter intelligence to them so maybe they'll think about holding off standing down or perhaps even abandoning um their end game they're not going to go away but they might try a, a new approach um but anyway I'm, I'm speaking kind of cryptically here um as many of you probably know uh and and this is a possibility for me that that i have not abandoned so that uh, one of zachariah and it didn't originate with him one of zachariah sitchin's uh constant themes was uh, the genetic manipulation by aliens of homo sapiens sapiens right we were made mankind in other words uh made into a slave race to mine gold or whatever it was for the the alien overlords and you, if you've read any of the books you know you get you get the basic scenario there so i don't rule out the the genetic manipulation but uh but but why does it necessarily involve an alien Right. We know that genetic manipulation can be done by human beings. Right. It's being done right now. We know about the chimera or the chimera or the the, the recombinant uh, processes. Now, is that something that requires alien intelligence to figure out? I don't think so. I think it's just taken decades and decades of research, lab research in order to get to that point. But anyway, I uh, I quibble there. Um, but the point, as I mentioned earlier, and it's worth repeating where Stephen Quayle departs from that, is that what that implies is that it's not God the creator, the God that we understand that's responsible for all life on planet Earth and maybe the universe. We're just talking about planet Earth, of the Earth, of the sea, 
the flowers, the trees, the birds, the bee, you know, human beings, our animal friends, all of it, right? That's not, that's taken off the table here. Um, when you talk about genetic manipulation by aliens and instead of God, right, by default, and I'm not sure if Sitchin actually says this, but by implication, the aliens are our gods. They are our gods and we're gonna worship, we're gonna fall down on our knees uh, in worship of these uh, aliens. And maybe, you know, and that part is plausible because according to empirical data, different survey research, and I know they have the limitations, at least in America, most people are not um, as devoutly religious. And I, that can be interpreted in many ways. Maybe they just don't go to some of these 5013 c churches anymore, which is really a positive um, shift away from, or, or maybe a lot of people have left the Catholic church. Maybe that's, that's great. Maybe they've left the, uh, the Methodist church because they don't want to go away from um, traditional uh, man and woman marriages, right? So it can be read different ways. But the point is, is that we in 2023 as a population are really susceptible given the fact, and I mentioned this in a previous talk, given the fact that we've already been preconditioned to accept, not just through ET or these, these science fiction movies or science fiction, genre, which was brought in by a Luxembourgian psyops person by the name of Ugo Gernsbach, right, with amazing stories. We have to check out who Ugo Gernsbach is. I think he's a very important person, part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire that came to America to prepare us for 2023. He's long dead, but his whole creation of, um, and he even coined the term science fiction genre, has allowed by now a few generations, mostly boys and men, and now who work at NASA, right, to this idea that that uh, we live in a godless universe, right? And many, many, many more examples of that. So the, the time is ripe for this, which me, which uh, for me makes a, a film like this, a documentary film, to be all the more important as a counterweight to the enormous barrage of entertainment, bogus news and information and analysis. A lot of it comes from indie media too, that is uh, taking us away from the real argument. What is the real argument? And this is where they bring in the V word. I hope Tubi doesn't take me off here because there's only, there's only a couple of times where I really get in trouble. One is to, to do a sort of critique or a review of the so-called royal family. We'll get to them in a moment, <laughs> including the UK King, Charles III, right? Because he's into it. And that's another strong feature while I'm at it of this documentary is because they bring in the, the politics, the global and globalist politics, and they with it to, to the theological and the religious institutional, including the Vatican, very brings in all these elements together very skillfully in about one hour and 15 minutes. And again, by the film, don't go by what I'm saying, what I'm showing you here. Right? This is just to whet your appetite, not to satisfy it. So let's take a look. Uh, and for me, to repeat, I think this is the most important, because who's going to have the guts to say, yeah, we, we, this is a Vatican operation when it gets down to it. Right. Of course, you know, they're they were aided and abetted by the Pentagon, the usual suspects, uh, NATO and um, the United Nations and all that. But who are who, who are the who are the the ecclesiastical authorities and who are they following orders from? Maybe. And he kind of leaves that open. It could be these alien entities. Um, but they're not a they're not a force for human liberation. They're 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 uh, therefore uh, to bring in this re this new agenda of lies, the kingdom of lies. So let's check it out. The 2021 COP 23 climate Con were world okay. leaders from nearly. Just very briefly, this is where the uh, UK King Charles III. I would say UK King, UK or British King, because he's not my king. He's not your king. We do not have a monarchical monarchical system or royalty in America. Uh, but, and that's why I refused to, to say uh, princes so-and-so or king so-and-so without prefacing uh, specifically what they're about. So here he is addressing 
Listen carefully what uh, the UK king is saying, Charles III, to this assembled group of people who are going to coordinate, just like they did the, 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 the psyops that were just recovering from the next possible one. And a document issue like this might forestall that from happening or maybe even forcing them to change course on this. But here he is, the UK king who some people say are just a placeholder for the battle royale between the ginger and the winger and you know, his wife, the winger and, um, and the other uh, one who, who are from the house of Stuart, by the way, and read your, your English, your British history to see the, that, that tension there between the house of Stuart and, uh, and uh, rival families that have claimed the throne. Here we go. Every nation on planet Earth. During his address, Charles spoke directly from prepared notes from which he appeared not to deviate. Clearly, this was no simple speech on climate change. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us just how devastating a global cross-border threat can be. We have to put ourselves on what might be called a warlike footing to act with all dispatch and decisively because time has quite literally run out. The scale and scope of the threat we face call for a global systems level solution. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. Here we need a vast military style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector with trillions at his disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, it offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. Again, the king used prepared notes that he did not deviate from. So who exactly is this person to whom Charles is referring when he mentioned his? Never once in his speech did the king identify who this person was, but the audience of world leaders appeared to know exactly to whom the king was referring. With trillions at his disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders. Okay, you can use your imagination. Just a comment here before we move on. Uh, obtained this book and i read it that's called the rebel king this is before the coronation the making of a monarch by tom bauer he's he's written some histories on the royals and i kind of trust him a little bit up up to a certain point and there's uh nice illustrations here if you want to check it out this is worth worth uh and it's indexed yeah and uh yakub rothschild is in here as well they have you know, all the player main players here. but I, the point is i read the book and it, it kind of gave me some hope that maybe the UK king, the new one, Charles III, would signal a slight, just an ever so slight departure of the globalist agenda that was being executed. But no, we see, you know, almost immediately he's on board with uh, the WF and all the different globalists. And he's leading the uh, charge amongst the excellencies, uh, your fellow excellencies. but. As uh, Quayle, and this is what's, what's kind of interesting to me, is saying that he's not the head guy. He's not the guy in charge either. Uh, there's some entities beyond that, and we're going to check that in a moment. So, yeah, I'll have to say that um, reading uh, about his early life, because he's kind of different. He talked to plants. He was into gardening, and this is when he was doing his prince duties. But once he became the king, Right, that's a different story. Then, then, then we see the, the the true agenda, and that's what's happening. So, um, uh, we're not going to get any help there. Um, he, he's um, he's tasked with the with the with the agenda. Yeah, he's going to uh, the alien could be an alien agenda, could be a Vatican agenda. And I uh, jumped the gun a little bit talking about the Vatican, but I'm showing you the secular government is coordinating with the ecclesiastical masters, which is the Vatican. So let's take a look now with what Quayle has to say about the V word right here. Have you been to the Vatican? Yeah, it's awe-inspiring. <laughs> um, 
when I went, of course, I didn't know. I mean, I knew that they were up to no good because I was familiar with the general history, but I didn't know anything about the alien agenda at that point. So here we go. Previously documented, the Vatican has taken drastic steps in preparation for the arrival of Earth's alien saviors. However, what most people will not understand is that these new arrivals are not new at all. They are ancient fallen angels who have been biding their time until they could be revealed as mankind's alien saviors. These are the lies of men and gods. If you want to change somebody's worldview, you don't just come out of the gate with an argument that is diametrically opposed to everything they believe. You use the Fabian process of gradualism. You send out these little softballs like, well, if there was an alien intelligence, we would be willing to baptize them into the Catholic faith because, after all, if they exist, they must be part of creation, so they're part of what God made. Little by little, they've changed that, though, and they've, and they've went to, to now saying, it's very possible that the alien intelligence is morally superior to us because what we know about ourselves is that we are fallen, but we can't assume the same thing about the aliens. Therefore, our space brothers may know more about God and the gospel than we do. Therefore, they will be coming here to baptize us into a better understanding of the Godhead. It won't be us baptizing them. So the language has continued to change. We often see in science fiction stories that aliens are here to either save us or they're here to destroy us. That's because rather than looking at the God of the Bible as an alternative, people will associate the projection of heavenly beings such as aliens as the ideal of what's transcendent and above humans as far as intelligence goes and where morality is concerned. The problem is, of course, what happens when those aliens, those heavenly beings, are not what they appear to be? Scientists, philosophers, theologians have all been having this exact conversation for centuries. They often muse that if something really is out there, how would it impact the world's major religions, especially those who view human beings as a special creation from a higher being? Okay, that is the argument in a nutshell being reinforced by uh, Tom Horns and his uh, incredibly well-informed from a biblical grounding uh, previous scholarship combined with Quayle, right, who's who's doing uh, a con furthering his work on giants and and UFO ufology and, and archaeology, right. Um, and then finally, uh, as we wrap it up here. Um, We'll see what our friend uh, Leo Zagami has to say about this. And for those of you who don't know who he is, uh, I've already held his book up and recommend that you get at least volume eight. I think it's the best one so far, but but get the earlier ones if, if you're inclined. But definitely volume eight, the, the, the current one here. Um, but if you don't know who he is, he was a insider Freemasonic. He was, the, the series is called Confessions of an Illuminati, which is him, because he was initiated. He was brought in, he was read into the programs. And for reasons that he describes here, and he, there's tons of interviews and you go check him out. For personal reasons, primarily, he, he moved out of it and has now given us a uh, first person insider's look at, to these structures. In, uh, given his unique vantage point, the opportunities he's had through family contacts uh, on both sides of his family, as well as his own, his own observations, check out the the great interview that that the conversation that that I had with uh, Leo Zagami earlier. If you want want to get get more of the personal take on it, um, but he also was a uh, Freemason and had very strong. Uh, contacts, reliable contacts within the Vatican, which has informed his ideas. So this is not your pundit pop up punditry. You you might want why why is he always complaining about X, Y, and Z, right? Because those people 
are at a far remove from the realities that they purport to be analyzing and looking at, right? Because that is the YouTube agenda, right? And they don't know any better. And worse yet, the people who are subscribed and watching them don't realize that the oxygen is being sucked out of their little submersible underwater sea craft. They're, being, they're going down with the little submersible there led by some Papa Pandit. So that's why I keep reinforcing, check out, then you know, these are, only, these are the only types of people I have on my show as guests, not the repeaters, not the Papa Pandit, but the people who are reporting from, from the inside out, their realities that most of us have zero understanding and definitely no experience doing. I mean, he's one of them. Okay, and I know for the people who are already Leo Zagami uh, readers and the viewers know this, but I'm just telling for the larger number of people who are beginning to find my channel <laughs> after two and a half years. It's my anniversary, two and a half years. After two and a half years of being throttled by tube you. So here we go. And again, this underscores what I think is the signal strength of this documentary, Lies of Men and Gods, which is talking about the V word. Here we go. Rome has been around for nearly 2,000 years. During that time, the Romans conquered numerous civilizations, many of which had pagan and occult practices. But rather than expunging these beliefs from those civilizations, the Catholic Church embraced them and made them part of their dogma. And you can go even further back to the Babylonian mystery religion on the plains of Shinar, which they have also incorporated into their practices. For all its wealth, its pomp and circumstance, and for all its air of legitimacy, it is no more than the combination of all of those religions and paganism. For those who are paying attention, the Vatican's true nature is even more evident as they add the alien agenda to their list of beliefs. Many years ago, during an interview, I uh, said something that still nowadays uh, seems to be uh, controversial about the involvement of Zacharias Sitchin with the Vatican. He, uh, let's say, participated in this ongoing uh, connection in the late uh, years of, uh, of Zacharias Sitchin. He participated to project together with the Vatican, uh, with a guy called uh, Corrado Balducci, who is a demonologist. Uh, tend ufologist by necessity. He, he talked about uh, aliens and somebody in the Vatican talking about aliens was back then an unheard thing. Now we have of course uh, the Jesuits uh, and they are openly for the alien. But this wasn't so in, in the 90s when Corrado Balducci mm -hmm. came out with this. Uh, Balducci is a controversial character. Now I have made this series of books called Confessions of an Illuminati. I arrived to four volumes and I in volume 3 I show an image which is very controversial, which shows Corrado Balducci together with the chief Satanist of that time, which was called Ephraim del Gatto, together participating in a ritual exorcism. Now, how is possible that the Vatican chief demonologist is together with the chief Satanist the Papa Neo, they used to call him in Rome, Ephraim del Gatto, and we actually have a photo that shows this collaboration between the Vatican and Satanists. But there is more to this. There is a satanic sect in the Vatican that operates since ancient times. There is a place called San Benedetto in Piscinibus, which is on the uh, near Borgo Santo Spirito, near where the Jesuits have the headquarters. It's inside there that they do the most satanic rituals in the Vatican. And it's right, the core of Vatican Satanism is right there. But uh, is this uh, Satanism or is this ancient paganism? Because uh, we are talking here about ancient artifacts that predate Christianity. And uh, these beliefs uh, were not really cast out of Rome once the Vatican established itself. They were co-opted in. We have the testimony of Leo Zagami of the satanic and occult practices taking place at the Vatican. And it can be assumed by his information that they were worshiping Satan himself. We were told by Ferramonti that although the Vatican initially disagreed with Sitchin's position on Nibiru and the Anunnaki, they later came to agree with him 100%. Balducci, who Sitchin befriended, was also a very close friend of the Pope. He was the Vatican's chief demonologist. 
And more importantly, he was also the church's point man for the UFO and alien encounters, as well as being responsible for introducing new theology and doctrine on the issue. It's easy to see how Balducci might have swayed Vatican opinion in favor of Sitchin's position. Given this background, it's apparent by Tom Horn and Chris Putnam's experience at the Vatican Observatory that Sitchin was successful in convincing the Vatican that Nibiru is coming. Now, the Vatican astronomer's only job on Mount Graham, according to their own testimony, is to use their multi-million dollar telescope and the Lucifer device to watch that incoming planet very closely. And they are constantly monitoring things with the Lucifer device. Now, they would not allow us to see what the Lucifer device was watching, but we were told that it was very specifically monitoring something in deep space. They were very cryptic about it. It again seemed to be echoing what Malachi Martin had said that they were watching a specific something that is approaching uh, the earth and as the engineer is talking about the Lucifer device and deep space and all that he just blurts out something that we didn't even ask and he starts talking about how sometimes they have to wait for all of the UFOs to get out of the way so that they could look at other things in space. And they're not talking about space debris and asteroids, they're talking about what appear to be intelligently uh, operated craft of some type that evidently fill deep space. There you have it in a nutshell. Uh, I, apologize if I apologize if I spoiled it for you. Spoiler alert, and I don't think there's such a thing as a spoiler alert. I think these passages need to be seen multiple times for it to sink in. I hope you will share this video to pique the curiosity of your friends and neighbors and uh, people who think um, you're a tinfoil hat person because you have the confluence of a number of reputable sources beyond Stephen Quayle's uh, network of people that that you well recognize, but people who are, dare I say, even in the academic world, you know, this is a very good book about Satan. It's called The Prince of Darkness. It's by Jeffrey Burton Russell. I said, wow, this is probably the best book on Satan I've ever read. read. Um, and it's not told from a theological perspective either. And it's published by Cornell University Press way back in 1988. Um, and it turns out he was teaching history at the University of California, Santa Barbara. So they're not all bad. And the good news is that there's more, there's a return to this type of academic research in the university now, because you're being taught by InfoWars and, and some of these indie channels that all it is is a bunch of rainbow haired, uh, pierced, body pierced, uh, tattooed, uh, lesbians, angry lesbians, and uh, CRT people who've taken over. No, no, no. It's it's going in the other direction. So I'm here to tell you that that uh, that the energy flow is shifting in our direction, right? From all the right quarters, right? It hasn't really filtered into the political class yet. It's starting into. It's starting to. Uh, but that that will happen. That will happen. We're seeing the residue. The, the um, the rhinos, so-called, as well as the Democratic Party, but their constituent, they'll, they'll be forced by their constituency who are watching documentaries like this, watching the two views, looking at the reaction videos of people like them and reading the books. They don't have to have a you know a formal education on this. They are, the American public in general are undergoing a a, a radical reevaluation of of their role within this society, let alone the cosmos. That's happening right now. It's not just me saying that, ob observing it, but it, it, it's, um, it's being remarked upon and written about, and as well as surveyed through survey research, again, whatever you depend on it, and uh, however much cred cred credibility you want to place on it. But, and the powers that be are, are observing this, because if, if nothing else, they're very good at studying the what I call cultural forensics. They're they're very diligent. And they have almost unlimited resources in in checking the headspace of the American population and its, and its various subdivisions.
whether ethnic, religious, gender, regional differences as well. And um, I think maybe that's one of the primary reasons why a large population of immigrants are being brought in there so they can be uh, built from the ground up because the rest of the American people are, are way beyond control at this point. We, we really are. Most of them, most of us have seen through the shuck. We have pierced the veil, right? And it's going to get better for, for us. Do not celebrate prematurely, but I uh, uh, document issues. I'm, I'm just going off a high from just watching this. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm more stable than that. I'm not just saying that, hey, you know, this is, this is going to be it. Turning, no, no, no. This is a long term process here but i'm just trying to tell you that instead of resigning like independent media wants you to into fear and storable foods and gold purchases that you are seeing that your efforts your thoughts your positive vibrations your conversations your reading and uh, your your own way of political involvement which could be as simple as talking to your neighbors and family is beginning to bear fruit. Okay, I want to leave you on that positive note. Again, buy this, check it out, share it, have a discussion, organize a little party at your house or get together, barbecue. Hey, it's 4th of July. Maybe it'll get to your house before fireworks day. And you can, while you're uh, roasting hot dogs and drinking beer and watching uh, gigantic steroidal behemoths uh, beat up on each other on the football gridiron, you can put this into the DVD player and say, hey, check this out. And the NFL is going to be pushed right to the side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you much, very much for spending this uh, precious time of yours with me today on this beautiful Sunday. God willing, I will see you back next week with uh, something equally as fascinating for your consideration. All right. Thank you. Bye.